Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to episode 94 of the Yin and Yang podcast. I, of course, am your humble host, your changed, enlightened, and uh, hopefully calmer host, Anthony Chu, a.k.a. Chuzilla, the ultimate thriller, or muscle no filler. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I broadcast to you, there's a lot of explaining that needs to be done. And uh, this show, before we get any further uh, into it, this show is powered by More Enterprises in association with Anti-USW Productions. And without further ado, I would like to play the theme music to my co-host's entrance. So, um, the Honorable Huang, would you please just play Mr. Mormon's music? Interesting. Okay. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you my co-host of the Yin and the Yang podcast. I would like to say that he is just a co-host to you. He is the co-navigator of this program who got me upset for several episodes, but now, hopefully, after some anger management courses, I have learned to calm down and be zen. And I'm trying to take Larry's advice to not go off the deep end. But, you know, what can I say? Oh, wait a minute. This is the best part of the song. Anyway, so uh, this is Larry. Tasty test number three is coming. Mormon. Oh God, I just woke up. Um, <clears throat> oh, all right. Larry, did uh, you not have any sort of preparation for this what? show? You just woke up out of nowhere. Are you aware that it's already eight forty-six hey, uh, oh, p.m. Oh, in the evening? No. Oh, all right, all right. Don't get upset. Don't get upset. I'm not upset, Larry. I am not upset. It's eight forty-six p.m. in on it Tuesday. Is. It is. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I had a senior moment just now. It's uh, Thursday night, since we're not allowed to record on Mondays, Tuesday, and Friday anymore. It's due to crazy. your wrestling, uh, well, due to your wrestling constriction. Oh, 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 man, Larry, we can't record on Mondays because Monday night rolls on. We can't record on Tuesdays because uh, you're concentrating on the retro gamers and editing all the other shows. The better. We guy. can't record on Wednesday. Simply because NXT and AEW is coming on. Oh, yes, and uh, Tuesday is also NWA Power. Uh, we're, we can only record on Thursday. Fridays, Larry, you are watching SmackDown on Fox. Saturdays, you are attending some wrestling show uh, every week. And Sundays, you're nowhere to be found. So this is the only time that I can actually get to interact with you and to speak with you and just to tell you that I'm – Larry, I, I, I'm a I'm – a, Try to be a changed man. Are you a changed man? Well, are you a changed man? I, I well, I, I change. I mean, but I, I change my underwear. My, the source of my anger and my contempt actually is rooted from your verbal beatings. I, again, I think we've discussed this before. I don't know what you're talking about as far as verbal beatings, uh, but we are, I'm just, I'm just waiting to get to a hundred. That's all. We're approaching episode 100. Uh, and but I'm here. Episode, so you're waiting. So why are you so eager to get to episode 100? I, I'm ask? just, you know, a lot of things happen after episode 100. Um, Should we just play the uh, recording that stated that you cannot wait to end this show? I don't think I said that. Look, it's it's how things are said versus how things are heard are two different situations. And what I say versus what you hear are two different things. But I am here right now. I am the consummate professional that I am. Uh, I'm not here to rock the boat. I'm here to actually have a good time. I heard last week's episode. Um, so, you know. Actually, there was no episode last week. That was just an eight-minute uh, obligated. No, actually, I shouldn't say it's obligated. It was just something that I felt very bad about that I need to exercise and, and to speak to the masses, even though they don't mostly listen to me. 
and and I can understand why the viewship is down. And I'm trying to take your advice. And you're telling me to listenership. I'm sorry, listenership. And I'm trying to take your advice on just trying to return back to the roots, like NWA powers, like they're going back to the studio, trying to return back to the roots of trying to be calm and trying to be zen without trying to go crazy. I think that's and Larry. I mean. I think that's the way to go. And, um, you know, it's okay. all right. I mean, the abuse that I've taken recently, you know, I mean, I, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. Uh, but and I'm here for 100 episodes. And then, well, Larry, the reason why you're here is because, number one, uh, our dad, BDM, Benjamin my, Davis Mormon, the father. honorable Benjamin Davis Mormon, my, uh, my father as well. He had said that you are obligated uh, ever since you lost your 28. All right, look, look, look. we that, don't have that, to talk about everything. And and also, Huang has suffered major, I guess, emotional distresses, um, I should say. So, you know, we are finally trying our absolute best to give the people what truly matters, which is news about health, fitness, motivation. That's, it. That's what it's all about. Martial arts, mixed martial arts, right? Yeah, because, I mean, you know, I want to see, and, and I'm going to use this episode episode 94 as a vehicle to really see if what to test your theory which is that if i return to the root of the way things were will the ratings go up i think they will um well first of all first of all you were on the recent episode of the retro gamers so that alone is going to help your uh listenership and i didn't go on a one extra listen well you know the the episode the new episode hasn't dropped yet uh, Larry, wait, wait, I'm sorry. It did not drop? Well, then we're recording it now. A full episode, I mean. Well, I understand, uh, but I'm saying when I was on the Retro Gamers, I, I boosted your listenership, but I did oh, not you boost did. mine. Oh, no, we got like we got like 100,000 more people listening. Uh, the, the listener per hour capita um, actually skyrocketed to a whole new record. Um, well, thank you very much, Larry, I for think it was really mostly giving me the credit for it. Because uh, thank of you for new hashtags that I was using. Um, but you know, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna the wave of success will splash onto this show, and I'm a firm believer that we will surf our way through the crest of time, and the dove of enlightenment will shine itself. Huang, could you please press the center button every time he talks now? What, what, what are you talking No, no, he doesn't have to hit that every time. Look, Huang, uh, don't make me come over there. Uh, okay, Huang, calm it down. Calm it down, relax. Let Mr. Mormon talk. Let him talk. He's just, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know what's gotten into him. He is just sitting there. He's, By the way, he's uh, completely off protein shakes now. Well, that's he's good. lost a lot of muscle mass. He's not, good. he's just very quiet, very zen. Can I, um, just like we are here. And, uh, while did, we're zen, did, Larry, did, did he lose, uh, did he lose enough? Raise my blood, did he, did before he, you raise my hypertension. Hey, hey, hey. Did he lose enough muscle I, mass that I can kick his ass? Now, Larry, Larry, let's let's not channel the anger that I had for the last few episodes to you, okay, while you're drinking your bottle of Coke. Listen, Larry. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh. Was that necessary, Larry? Was I, apo- really I necessary? apologize. I apologize. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. What you're am I doing? No, I'm not. Point where break so that I can have a meltdown. And then you could be entertained by the meltdown, and then I could be fired from the show. Because, am, Larry, for the first time in nearly eight months, you've actually attended a production meeting. And once you found out that if I have another violent outburst or another tirade or I physically go nuts uh, and I beat the daylights out of Quang, you're going to be happy that – you know, I will be kicked off the show, and the show will be over, so you don't have to be obligated to it every, anymore. Look, look. Well, Larry – I can I'm use the free time, ticket. but I'm sorry. I meant Larry, no. I, I meant Larry. I I know that you want to throw your ticker tape parade. That's coming in a month and a half. 
All right, because I know the show is basically the anal cavity uh, that has VD uh, in in your network. And uh, although Dad is still only keeps his show on, I think sometimes theoretically because he likes Wang so much. Now, Larry, while we're while we're uh, let's get to calm some and everything stuff. like that. Yeah. Let's get to the first <clears throat> article at hand. Please. All right. Okay. First so article. So the Here very first article at hand is, Larry, let me ask you something. And I know that you are dire straits for money, as you always are, because you spend it on things that uh, really <laughs> don't really matter. No, no, they do matter. I mean, even though tomorrow I am getting my new 130-inch television um, delivered, and we're going to put that right next to the my other 130-inch television, which I'll be watching NXT and AEW on. Um, this Case is going to be side by side. Made. Should be side by side or, or or up and down. I haven't figured that one out yet. Well, case in point made right then and there. Thank you so much, Larry. Right. You've been greatly supportive of my point. I appreciate that. Uh, what? So um, I was reading on MMAfighting.com okay. that uh, – Larry, let me ask you this. Okay. If somebody cheated you. Whether it be me, Wang, which you have, which he has, anybody, mm-hmm. you don't even know what I'm talking about. Just can can you just listen to what I have to say before? Okay, I, I know what you're trying to do. I'm not, you're trying to get me mad. You're trying to get me mad. I know. No. I know. You're trying to get me mad. What? Why would I? Because you want the show to end, and I'm not going to give I you have, a ticket tape. Right I have now. no ill will. Larry, please stop pressing my buttons, okay? It's just not going to work. It's not going to. Fun- hey, oh, what? Larry, I'm sorry. It's not going to funnel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wayne, can we play that back? <laughs> it's not going to fun. Right. Oh, did you really have to play that back, Wang? Seriously, is that a joke on me now? I deserve it. I deserve it. I beat the daylights out of you. I deserve it, Larry. It's not going to funnel your way. Okay, and it's not going to give you the release that you need. So, Larry, if I cheated you or Huang or anybody else cheated you off thirteen thousand dollars, would you be angry? Oh, God, I would punch you square in the face. I would kick you down the stairs and I would make sure that the hell, the living hell that you would be going through for taking that money from me would pale in comparison to hell itself because the demon, the devil incarnate has nothing against what I would do if someone took my money. But I'm just saying that probably would be me. Frank, frankly, quite frankly, I should say uh, that right there that you just demonstrated is the hypocrisy of this network of more enterprises because because you're the owner's son right you the are owner. allowed to go on a tirade all right and yet i have to be zen and calm. i didn't anyway. i didn't go on a tirade i was just i answered your question so john jones's former coach frank lester he's mm-hmm. a pro fi- fighter and a longtime striking coach with the jackson wink team that trains john jones uh, is basically stating on Instagram that Jones failed to pay him thirteen thousand dollars in preparation for the last fight that he had with Tiago Santos. So on um, on Instagram, this is what he wrote. Uh, he showed a display of his house in New Mexico, mm-hmm. and uh, he also displayed is beautiful what looks like a Toyota Forerunner or a Land Cruiser, which is nearly a hundred thousand dollars. Oh wow. And he says, after three different houses being screwed over by the best damn team in the world, Jackson Wink, uh, the uh, and number one pound for pound fighter on the planet, John Jones, over thirteen thousand dollars for his title fight. Myself, my wife, and our children, Jordan, Braden, blah blah blah, have finally uh, have finally have a home big enough for all of us. I have no regrets. I did my job for it, and anybody who had followed my journey knows I did my job. Jones and Winkle John uh, did did. Uh, just did me dirtier than I've ever seen in this fight game. Uh, but good things prevail uh, over evil, and we have a home uh, big enough for all of us. And I'm opening up Tank MMA in the next six months, and we're going to take over the beautiful city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Karma's real, and John, it's on site. Uh, it's on site with me and you, and you know that. You stole from my family. You got uh, you got me fired from my job for no reason for that I'm grateful because I'll never work with a crook like uh, 
Winkle loser again. <clears throat> wow. I'm 10 times the coach you've ever been. Uh, you just bought out Greg's name, and unfortunately, Jackson's was out of the um, was out in the control of a dirt butt dirt bag. Uh, but f you all very much. Uh, the only thing that comes uh, when I hear your names are cowardice and deceit. It's on site, JBJ John Bones Jones. So this is what he says. So keep that security close, f boy. Uh, we both know you ain't no real one. Uh, real Jones don't steal from pregnant women and their families. Uh, war, certif- uh, war certified hashtag and hashtag tank life uh, JBJ. So he claims that he uh, that he owes him that kind of money. Now, obviously, you'd figure Bones is not going to sit there and pretty much say you know nothing. So now Bones comes back and he says, Frank, I gave you the opportunity. Of a lifetime. Everyone on the team knows that I would not agree to give you $20,000 for only your second training camp on my team. And if I did, I totally have uh, totally add to that amount. Uh, not once in 10 years have I ever gotten a complaint about not paying staff members. If anything, I'm always complimented for being people's highest paying client by a long shot. I won't even get into the fact that you were fired from the team on fight week because of your drug issues. Wow, that's kind of digging below the belt. That is low. Anyways, oh, yeah. well, I mean, should he really talk since Jones? No, that's is what a, I meant. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Is a drug uh, druggy too? Anyways, I'm not going to argue with you over the internet. Uh, I would, I would be more than happy to take this to a judge. It's the physical threatening that I have a problem with. I have no interest in carrying a concealed pistol or preparing for any type of street fight with you. Well, why not? I mean, Jones would kill him. Tomorrow, Basically. I will be calling a- APD, <clears throat> Al- Albuquerque Police Department, and bring your confrontation to their awareness. Honestly, I wish I would have had, uh, I would have never had gotten to know you, but I do wish you nothing but the best. Please just leave me alone, bro, or see me in court. So, who's right and who's wrong in this case? Because it seems to me as though one is a matter of financial and the other one is a matter of ethics. Um, your, your take, kind yeah, stuff? it's you know, is it the pot calling the kettle black? Well, I mean, you know, he shouldn't bring up drug issues since uh, for the any of you who don't really watch MMA, uh, Jones has tested positive for drugs. Exactly, he's had traced amounts of cocaine. Exactly, uh, he cannot pass tests <clears throat> given by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has been he's unable to fight. Uh, in certain cases, and I mean, I don't think that, I mean, for a, a guy who's so talented, I mean, how could you say something about somebody's drug issues, and yet this guy, Lester, I've never heard of him, so he is going to now open Tank MMA, so now Albuquerque, New Mexico is going to have a battle between Tank and Winkle John, and it's going to be crazy, and I think that, I don't think the city of Albuquerque really really knows what it's getting themselves into by having this because lord knows you know a lot of you know these mma guys they have a lot of ego oh absolutely. they have a lot of ink probably some they of the biggest ego, of, you know tension some of the biggest egos in sport oh yeah i mean you know so you know when you look at that i mean that's that's crazy mm-hmm. you know um i mean so i mean well i will say this though jones is taking the better stance at this by saying that you know look um you know i don't want to fight you you know let's do this in court where people settle disputes in the real world right this is so be, this would I be mean, awesome for like people's court like with judge koch you think so oh yeah how am i doing how am i doing absolutely oh i don't know man i don't know you know he would just he would just hit that gavel, boom, just call it like it is. Or Mills Lane. Mills Lane, that would have made more sense. Judge Mills Lane. That would have been cool because then seeing Judge Mills Lane, you know, I mean, really return because uh, he's also a referee. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, so that's dead, pretty awesome. That don't help. Oh, now no, you leave him alone. He's dead. What? Oh, that's true. I like Mills Lane. I love right? Mills Lane. 
Um, now, sir, allow yes. me to say. Uh, so I don't. I, I don't know, man. I just don't like seeing people beef with one another. But what can you do, right? Uh, you know, now, it, it shit happens sometimes. It um, does. And when money gets in the way, you know, as you know how you've acted in the past, when money gets involved, sometimes people don't think straight. Right. True. That is so. true. Well, I mean, yo, I mean, do you, now, okay, but then to answer the question, who's the bad guy and who's the good guy in this situation? Oh, that, yeah. The hard that, one, isn't it? That one's a hard one. Yeah? Yeah. Well, man, Ta- I'll tell you, tell. it's crazy, right? Well, let's hear from, you know, uh, Yin and Yang Universe. Weigh in on this on our Facebook page. Uh, feel free to comment um, under the um the link that will have this episode and you know let's hear from you let's let's hear what you have to say exactly so fans on to our next uh, article speaking of bros actually Dana White Dana White got uh anger from a certain bro that you and I know are you talking about the original Bro. The original bro established bro, in 2015. Bro bro bro, bro. 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 Yeah. So it's not every day that, and this is interesting because it's not every day that in the UFC you see a fighter, young, hungry, come up, win four straight, and it gets released by the UFC. Honestly. Right? So who we're talking about here is uh, one of my f- absolute favorite MMA fighters turn. Um, Turned pro wrestler, uh, NXT current NXT NXT superstar Matt Riddle, yeah, the original bro, and um, basically, uh, you know, Riddle, I don't know why he got released from the promotion, okay, but that's exactly what happened to him in 2013, and at the that, that time he was dealing with a pair of consecutive failed drug tests for his marijuana that overturned two of his four wins in that run. Oh, did it? I didn't well, realize that. Yeah. Following the second drug test, the UFC just opted to void his contract, right? Meanwhile, look at John Jones we just talked about. Right. Well, we look at John Jones. Look at fucking Nate. Look at the Diaz brothers who are like massive advocates for, for marijuana use, right? Yeah. And I don't and I don't understand why they released them. Uh, why don't they release them both? You I know? Don't, I but, don't get it. Yeah, but they released a young, hungry, up-and-coming guy in 2013. And in the a- math, aftermath... Dana White called Matt Riddle a dummy, okay, while lashing dummy. out on him. And uh, thank you there, Fred. And um, Riddle ultimately went on to fight one more time, and he picked up a win in Titan FC, which is a minor league promotion. And then he that. soon turned into a pro wrestler. He did. He's a right? former so, Evolve champion, former WWN champion, uh, former member of Catchpoint. And um, at the time that this is recording... I missed last uh, last week's episode of NXT, but I didn't get a chance to watch this week's episode uh, when he took on Adam Cole, Bay Bay. So we'll see. But of course, you can ah, listen. You see, I told. What? I'm sorry. Ha! Ah, you see, I told you we would talk about professional wrestling here on this show once again. Well, I was just going to say, if you want to listen to them, all of it, tune in to Talking More Wrestling this Saturday, oh. six. This Saturday at 6.05 p- What is he doing over there? This This Saturday, 6.05 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop. It's, it's part, of, part of the family podcast. Just let the man talk. Go ahead, go ahead Larry. Promote your, promote your pet project. I did. We'll talk about it more later. Oh, okay, so now that I'm giving you the form, you don't want to speak. That's great. Talking anyway. more wrestling this Saturday, six oh five p.m. Eastern. Wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, so Riddle, uh, you know, is a star now. And during a recent interview, White justified his decision to release Riddle, and this is what he said: okay. Dana White and I. Quote, I've heard interviews with Matt Riddle, and he's very fired up about being let go and everything. Uh, at the at that place in time where we are, it was the right move. I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he's been successful and he's doing well. I don't wish that kid any ill will. I don't hate Matt Riddle or dislike Matt Riddle in any way. 
I know he feels the opposite, as he should, but I do wish him I'm sorry, I don't wish him any ill will or anything, but no, I don't regret the decision that I made at the time. So following that interview, Riddle decided to take his Instagram uh, to take to his IG to fire back <laughs> as he Dana does, White, as he always does, i.e. Goldberg. I, you know, yeah. uh, and this is what he says. OK, he says, Dana, I'm not mad that you fired me. Riddle wrote. I'm mad because you're a heartless moron with too much money and power <laughs> and felt the need to call me a loser after you fired me when I was on a four fight winning streak and my third child almost bankrupted me. Um, also, to say that it was the right call to fire me is the dumbest thing ever. Um, you literally tried to ruin my career slash life because you're a little bald, a word that rhymes with rich, that couldn't control me. So stop lying. It's sad, bro. Hmm. I'm just surprised that it took him that long to say the word bro. Yeah, yeah you would think he would have started off with that. Like, bro, right. listen here, bro. I don't, I'm not exactly. mad at you, bro. Which, you know what's really funny? His theme song sounds like it's like this laid-back California culture, and yet he's not from there. He's not from California? No. I don't think he is. California. Anyway. So, uh, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, I would have loved to have seen what his career would have been like had he, you know, had he really gone on to uh, to go past. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's from Allentown, Pennsylvania. In well, case that's you where he's know. from. That's interesting. Yeah. Living here in Allentown. Shutting all the factories down. Seeing if a UFO comes into play in the Forgo, and we're living here in Allentown. Are you done? For now. Do you have a problem with my singing? Actually, I do, because it sucks. But, you know, I'm not supposed to be upset at it. I'm not supposed to get upset. I'm supposed to be calm relaxed, taking it easy, right? Because, you know, the, the therapy tells me that uh, I need to calm it down. So I, I'm calming it down, Larry. I'm calming it down. I, hey, listen, I know you want to press my buttons, and that's just not going to happen, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. but uh, so, Are, you, all right, are so, you at a loss for words? I'm never at a loss for words. I, I, I see that. Yeah. You and I a better solo show than you. So, uh, all right, so Riddle has some, you know. Would you excuse me for just one moment? What? what? Excuse me. Excuse okay, me. no, where are you going? All right, Anthony's stepping away for a moment. Fucking guy! This fucking guy! Every fucking time! I got something to say, you just can't shut the fuck up! This fucking piece of shit! Every fucking time! Nine four goddamn fucking episodes! I have to deal with this motherfucker, and yet all the time, he's always got to one-up me. Ever since we were kids, and all the way to now, 30 fucking years worth of this shit, I have to fucking deal with his goddamn attitude, his fucking ego. Ugh. Hey, Larry. How's uh, it going? Hey, what? Y you okay? What? Are you, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, all right. I, I mean, it's cool, man. I mean, I just, you know. Stepped away I just stepped up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, I, I was told by. Oh, I know I mean, what you told me. The mic was I, on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. And and I was just told that. Uh, oh, you're talking about all that cursing over there just now? Well, yeah, you, you were saying some stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. So basically what happened was that. Um, in the classes, they teach us to, you know, really show how we feel uh, on a one on, uh, you know, just on a self basis. Okay, like it's an, kind like of an like, internal um, reflection. It's kind of like no, they they compare it to like playing solitaire. Okay, you know, by yourself, okay. you know, you're just yes. the only thing that you're like doing is beating yourself, and then and then uh, you know, I pretty much, uh, or you're you know, you're playing against yourself, and mm -hmm. then later mm -hmm. on, play with yourself, and you'll be calmer. Well. well. Wait, what? Anyway, um, so, Larry, um, to be very honest with you, I mean, 
my my whole problem, right, with this whole riddle situation is that I want to see how far he would go. I want to see how good he would have been. But then in a way, you know how they say sometimes you turn a negative into a positive. Mm -hmm. And now he's just one of the largest stars. And and I and I'm really glad that they're giving him the spotlight because he's turned out an excellent career. He has. You know, he really he has. has. And for himself, I mean, for his family. He's doing good. Right, exactly. And I'm really glad. And by yeah. the way, when I did meet him, he was one of the nicest people I think I've ever met. I believe so, that. So, uh, really cool dude. Believe really, that, really player. Cool. And when he was walking down the aisle, he gave me a fist bump. So there you go. Cool. Gave me, I was the first person to give fist bump to him. Like, yeah. Not where? But anyway. Uh, the NXT show. Oh yes, 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 yes. In February. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Same one. Same one I proposed Kyrie to. Anyway, so um. Anyway, stupid. That. Would you excuse me for just one moment? Wait, you go. Whoa, what? He's up and away again. I swear my fucking dreams every fucking time. He's got to hear me. He's got to hear me. He's got to fucking shout at my dreams. God fucking them every time. Now why? 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 Because, ah, ah, you son of a bitch. You just want to fucking, like, rip your hair out. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have any goddamn hair. Yeah, that's because it's all the stress and all the bullshit and why my hypertension and my fucking blood pressure goes up the wall is because of him. Every fucking week. Yes, yes, I'm in love with Kyrie. I know he's going to hate on me. I know he's going to uh, he's gonna be upset at me. Everything from NXT all the way till the time that she's in SmackDown, he's always hated on me. Always. Fuck. Hey, Larry. What's up, bud? Um, uh, what, what was that? All, all of that before? Oh, it was my way of saying, we're really glad that you're our friends, and this is uh -oh. the friendship that will never, ever end. Okay, I mean, the mic was on, but okay. It's my way of saying that. I oh, mean, fair just, enough. You know, there's no fiend. There's no fiend. No, no fiend? All right, good, good. No, fiend scares no, no. me. I, like, I just... Oh, really? I am frightened of the fiend. Wow, okay. Yeah, I've, I've well, been sleeping with the lights I, on lately. Listen, I... Larry, I don't have one hurtful bone in my body, and I would never, ever do anything to get my friends upset. You know, and, and Larry, I value your opinion. I mean, I, I do. I don't get anyone upset. I That's may not, not agree I mean. with you, but I value your okay. opinion. All right, good. See, good. You in, see you in hell. Wait, what? Because, Larry, sometimes all you need to do is just let me in. I'm not grabbing, I'm not reaching into your sack, I'm not letting you in. What the heck are you talking about? What, I, listen, Larry, look, I'm, I have to apologize to you about this whole, uh, you know, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. I, I, for now, um, early? Okay. I dug up an interesting article mm -hmm. about... Um, believe it or not, they say I'm walking on air. Nobody wants to believe in me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a joke. What? Wait, what? What? Fine. Fine, Larry. Fine. It's okay. It's all right. Just sing joking. your heart out. I was it's, joking. It's also known as this show should also be known as not just the yin and yang podcast. It should be known as Larry's karaoke. Hour. I was joking. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, you, you were so digging up some dirt. I was Not digging dirt, up but. an interesting article, and I saw this thing that stated that, believe it or not, working out practically means nothing for weight loss. Really? I'm sure you're very happy to hear that, Larry, because yeah. holy crap, like I couldn't believe it myself that when I when I actually. Sense. Okay, and in some senses, it does. I mean, in theory, it doesn't make sense to me. Really. If you work out, you burn. You should be burning calories. If you're burning calories, you got to be burning fat. Well, according to this article here, all right, um, it basically states on um, where's this article done by? Uh, oh, um, the article is done by Pop Sugar. It basically states that 
your exercise is only meant to enhance the body's performance. But in terms of weight loss, basically 90 percent, 85 to 90 percent of it is done in the kitchen. So that uh, there's an old saying in, in the in the gym that, you know, when you ask your trainer, you know, how do you get abs like yours? He'll say abs are not made here. They're made in the kitchen. Huh. Which means it's about what you intake and, and all that stuff. And that's really important. Interesting. More so than the working out. And they're also saying that – and they're, they didn't say this directly, but they're also uh, kind of hinting to say that calories don't actually mean anything. Ultimately, hmm. it's not the calories that, that count. It's what you intake that's more important than your calorie count. So you can intake, let's say, 500 calories – there's a fine difference between uh, 500 calories, let's say, of a burger and fries, right, or whatever, as opposed to 500 calories worth of salad, which is a lot of salad. That's like <clears throat> pounds of salad. Yeah, no, that's a lot of salad. Right? But they're saying that there is a big difference because it's how it, it dramatically affects your body. Hmm. So there are people out there who will actually just eat right and not work out and go to the gym or, or do any physical activity. But they're stating that it goes hand in hand regardless it just so happens that the working out is more of a complementary effect, okay. whereas the eating part is actually direct effect, hmm. which I found really interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, hey, look, I I, I, like, I don't put out <clears throat> any info. I'm sorry, you were saying? I was going to say, I just, and I just ordered a new uh, fitness program for the Nintendo Switch, so I'm wondering if that's even going to be worth it or not. Well, keep it because about twenty years from now, when you're about uh, sixty, and uh, Rippo's about forty, no, no, about sixty something, uh, <laughs> he, you both can actually look back at more retro gaming. Well, this is true. Because hopefully, we'll still be doing the podcast by then. But what I'm saying is, this new uh, game. I won't. We'll invite you on every now and again. Don't worry. I'm counting it down to a hundred, and I'm getting. Why the are you count? What? Wait, what? I'm getting the Living Healthy magazine that's coming out next month. I feel like you want to say something else. Why in the f- fine, you know, decor and in the in the you know fine moment and this fun filled episode? Would I ever want to say anything obscene or anything negative? And, oh, you, you know, Larry. You gotta stop thinking negative, please. Well, I, please. look, I, I, I'm doing fine. I'm. Do, I think I'm there's good. something that you want to say to me. I do. I do want to say something to you. What do you want to say to me? I mean, I want to say I love you, but really, you've shown that physically already. You know what? I mean, I feel like you're putting on a charade. All right. Charade. And I don't, you know, I'm holding a lot back myself. And I've been waiting a long time for this. Know what I want to tell you? What's that? Fuck you. Are you serious, Larry? Would you really... Re- Larry, come on. You really feel that way about me? Serious? <sighs> Larry, I think that... You know what my response to that is? Do you really want my response? 10, 9, Larry? 8, 7. Relive the glory. No, 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 no. You don't even what? have to do that. You uh, don't even have to do that. I'll do one better for you. Okay. okay. This is just for you. You may say... F you to me, and I say back to you. All right, then. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back once again to another Reclaiming You. And I am sure that things are calmer in the studio. As you're listening to episode 94 of the Yin and the Yang podcast. And what I'd like to do right now is to get you into the proper mindset 
of this uh, segment here. So I want you to just do this once with me. Just uh, take a few seconds just to basically pull in all that positive energy and just take a good, slow, deep breath. So let's just do this with me. Breathe slowly into your nose and hold it for a quick second and then just let all that negative energy out. (sighs) Nice and slow, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, as we're, you know, as we're talking about this, um, you know, this past weekend, I I had a really, really interesting, um, interesting experience with my nephew. Uh, this past weekend, uh, my nephew Edwin, I love him so much. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing six-month-year-old baby, and um, you know, I I got to see him, and I I love him very much, as I had mentioned here. And you know, it it really is interesting because uh, my brother had told me that uh, as we were having dinner, uh, celebrating my mom's uh, birthday, you know, I noticed that my nephew had to wear this hat that looks like a, something for a gladiator, and, or it looked like a helmet. And I said to my brother, why does he have to wear this thing? And my brother said that you know he has, I, I guess he would not say a deformity, but the hat helps him adjust uh, to his shape of his skull because uh, a part of his skull was flat, and then the other part was just, it's just not symmetrical. And this hat actually is not comfortable. Um, You could see that my nephew is not very comfortable wearing it, especially for a six-month-year-old kid. And it just, you know, when I heard that, you know, it pained me to to actually see that, um, you know, such a young young kid, a young baby, you know, would have to go through something like this and it's not comfortable and he really is not happy about it. But somehow, some way, if you play with him and you joke around with him, he forgets about all that and he becomes so resilient. And I said to my brother, uh, I said, how is it in the world that for him to be in such a state of pain uh, or just a state of discomfort, you know, how does he find the will or the, or the resilience to be just happy and smiling and playful and cheerful in the light of all this. Now, obviously, discount his age and take that away and take away the fact that I don't think he would understand, you know, why he's wearing it and all that, right, obviously, because of his age. And my brother said to me that, you know, babies have a way of somehow, some way, finding a way to be tough during tough times. Or babies have a certain way of reacting to it with happiness and and ha- reacting to it with, you know, obviously they're they're sad that they have to wear it, but they also have, you know, they find ways to be happy. And I think that after hearing that, it really inspired me for this week's episode. And my brother also, by the way, told me that after a couple months, he has to wear this thing for three months and he has to wear it practically Uh, he can only, he has to wear it, I think like 20 hours a day, you know, and it's very difficult. I mean, if you told me to wear something like that for 20 hours a day, it'd bother me as well. And I think it would bother anybody, but for my nephew being so resilient and being so tough, you know, during a tough time right now, it really tells me that, and you know, yet he finds a way to smile and yet he finds a way to be happy. And it really, really, it hurt me to see him like that because I love him so much. Um, But it really also inspires me because I look at my nephew and I say to myself, how is it that young man such as himself can find a way, you know? And I think that somewhere along the way in our lives, we go from naturally being happy to, you know, where we are now, where we have difficulties and challenges and adversities. And if you're not inspired by anything else this week, not by what's around you, what you see, what you hear, 
Um, be inspired by the fact that if a, if a six-month-year-old kid, six-month-year-old baby can actually find a way to smile through all this adversity, what do you have to be unthankful for? What do you have to be upset about? Because I think that babies and children have the purest form of honesty. You know, uh, for the most part, I don't think kids lie, you know, and um, and that really inspires me. So when I look at anything difficult that I'm going through, like uh, I have foot pain right now and I have back pain right now compared to what my nephew has to go through. It doesn't bother me so much anymore because it gives me this sense of uh, not urgency, but it gives me the sense of fighting pride that I need to push through this. And I will, you know, and for anybody out there who's going through anything difficult, and I don't care whether it's the simplest of things or the most difficult of things. If anybody is inspired this week, not even by me, okay? You don't even have to be inspired by me this week. Be inspired by a six-month-old baby who can tell you that no matter how difficult things are, never give up and keep fighting on because you are you. And there's nobody else in the world who can replace you. And I don't care if you have eight identical twins. Each person is totally different. You may look the same, but you're totally different. And ultimately, it's what you do in this world that counts. And hey, you never know. Maybe there's somebody out there who will look at you and be inspired by what you can do. So fans, please, by all means, think about this. It's a very simple very short one, and uh, but I want you to think about you know where and what the source is. So fans, if you have any questions, just uh, email us at yin and yang podcast at gmail.com. All right there, Larry. I think that uh, we are back. We, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, okay. Well, there you are. Okay. Well, Larry, I think this is one of your absolute favorite parts of the show. I, I apologize about that outburst. What outburst? The one I had earlier. Oh, uh, Larry, that it's just minor stuff. Don't even worry about it, you know? I mean, you because know, because the outburst I'm going to have on episode 100 is going to pale this one. I can't wait for episode 100. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Larry should have been on the cast of Dead Alive. Four, three, two, one. Somebody should tell him. He's a forgotten son. Zero. Larry is not a hero. <sighs> all, so right, Larry, all right. So let's do now this. All right. Calmer. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Come on. Woo. Big money. Big money. Big money. No whammy. No whammy. No whammy. No whammy. No whammy. Stop. Oh, well, Larry, I think that what you stopped on is something called Sack Street. Because what I'd like for you to do. Right now, playing some football, to, some XFL, because I uh, took I was, some of the podcast money and got ticked. Uh huh. Now, Larry, I know you're trying to get me upset. I've never been paid for any of these episodes anyway, so I don't. I've not lost any money. Maybe Anthony and Frank may think a little bit differently, but I haven't lost anything. But Larry, I will say this: I want you to reach into my sack of mail. What? Oh, and I want you Damn, every to time. take out the fan letters and read what you got to read. All right. Uh, okay. What, uh, sir, what sack were you actually trying to express? To I, me? I, I thought it was like a like a football reference. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, OK. So um, what do we got here? Uh, Hector Espinoza. From Ponch, Puerto Rico. Oh, no, Ponch, like Ponce. Uh, Ponce. No, no, Ponch, like uh, from Chips. Spell it. 
P O N C E. Ponce. Oh, I mean Ponce. Puerto Rico. Right. Uh, hola, amigos. The weapon of choice in Puerto Rico is a machete. Uh, do you think it can hold its own against a sword in the East? Why it, why not? Why? This guy doesn't know English. Why it, why not? Please come to Puerto Rico and have some point coladas and mofongo. Gracias. This shows exactly how white you are. What? What are you talking? That's rude. That is extremely rude. I'm just reading this. I'm sorry I never took low Spaniel, okay? So, whatever. Oh, God. Like, you're fluent in the language. Base would be cool. Anyway. Um, I'm sorry, what? It means uh, kiss my arse. Anyway. Again, um, rude. Larry... Oh, God. Just count it down. Count it down. No, let's not count it down because I, I don't even want to count it down. Larry, that was the single. It just, I'm sorry. I, in, in, in the manage, anger management courses, we were told to express how we feel with no filter simply because it just helps you ease the blood pressure down. So that was the whitest thing I think I've ever heard. Anyway, so, um, now, Rude. a machete, for those of you who don't seem to understand, machete, machete is bi- It's fun to say. Speak again, and I'll have Huang do the uh, sensor again. Oh, come on. He can't be doing... Would you tell him to stop... Pre- he does it for way too long. And it- See, he's starting to wear down. Something to break. Just answer the damn question. The truth be told is that a machete is actually a stainless steel piece of uh, <clears throat> weapon. That is no joke. Um, I don't even think that there are Chinese swords out there that are sharp. And I would say to you that a machete, first of all, for those of you who don't know, is used to cut trees and the like, not humans, but one slice out of that thing, and I think that you can literally hack uh, easily. It's basically the advantages of a machete is that it's sharp as hell, um, and I'm sorry, it's sharp as Hades, and it's also, at the same time, one of those weapons that, unfortunately, the downside of it is that you can only hold with one hand, unless you have a longer handle or smaller hands that you can use, too. Now, the other disadvantage with the machete is that it's a short range weapon meaning that it's really short to mid range depending on the size and the length of the machete uh it does it rival other swords from the east i don't know it depends on what you're putting it up against i mean if you're putting up against a broadsword i think it would actually slice the broadsword in half I'm not it's called just a trying to disrespect sword? my people uh, rude would you excuse me for just one second? Oh, okay. I'm going. Where's he going? Son of a bitch! Must he disrespect my fucking culture? Why does he have to fucking say something for everything? Always something out of nothing. And nothing out of making it into something. Fuck! So, Larry, um, yeah, so as I was mentioning uh, with the with the broadsword, uh, you know, I mean, could it go up against a katana uh, or something of like, you know, Japanese craftsmanship? Again, it's very, very hard to tell. But I, if you're talking about it in a combative sense, I would say it's more fight the person, not the weapon, you know, because really – Weapons are dead. It's the people who use them who bring it alive. So basically, guns don't kill people. I do. Yes, you are. Well, it's debatable whether you're human sometimes or not, but that's a different story. What is going on here? Next question. 
Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to like the things. That's all. Jack C. from Ottawa, Canada, asks... His last name is S-E-A-C? Uh, no, the letter C. Oh, I see. No, no, it's Jack C. Jack C. Is his name? Yes. J A C K S I E. Jack C. No, no, no. Jack C. His last oh, name. Also, like Jack, and then his last name is C, like uh, initial C. Period. Well, there's no technically there's no period, but I assume that's probably the case. I think you're on your period. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so, what was the question? <sighs> What the hell? Where's he going? The hell? Every time. This son of a bitch. I'm trying to, you know, I'm sure he reads. Oh, he's got to see these questions beforehand. Always tell me to reach into my sack. Reach into my sack. How? I don't. Oh. 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 Snikes! Are you having a heart attack there, Larry? Are you all right? Oh! 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 Oh, Let me get back over here. And your suffering is 1,000 heart attack. We of the club would like to salute him. The Bears. The Bears. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Are you okay. Okay. So, uh, are you sure you want to read read the uh, second question? I, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. Things got a little. I got a little lightheaded there for a moment. Left arm feels kind of numb too, but whatever. Oh, um, Jack C from Ottawa, Canada asks, "What is the American equivalent of A in your opinion?" What is yours? I don't, do think? I don't think there is one. I, don't, I, think, a, I think there is one. Actually, I think A is something that we even made up for Canada. I don't think Canadians really say A. No, hold on. They do. Oh, okay. Oh, but, okay. You know what the American equivalent is? What? Like. Like. Mm, okay, I can see that. Yeah, like. I can I like, yeah. can, like, see that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but uh, see, I don't think that they say A that often, though. No, no, not as often as we make it out. Right. So. I don't even understand what that per- has to do with the show. How, how, what's it pertaining to? But I don't whatever. know. These are weird questions. <sighs> we got a, oh. We have an interesting demographic of listeners. My You're all right. killing me. Come on, why is my left arm? Come on. <sighs> okay. Okay. Tom Swizerski... From Springfield, Swiderski, Swid, Swiderski, Swiderski. Okay, yes. From Springfield, Illinois, asks, "What is your opinion?" Wait, 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 wait. Is that where Homer Simpson lives? Um, well, we don't know what state technically. There are thirteen Springfields in the United States. Okay. Um, writes, "What is? I don't even know what this is. What is your opinion of XMA?" What the hell is that? I have no idea. Oh! Is that some oh, sort of extreme oh, martial oh, arts? I, yes, yes, that's what it Is that what, what for real? You, yes, that's exactly what it means. Extreme martial arts. Isn't martial okay. arts already extreme? Well, depending on what martial art we're talking about and how we're using it. Um, absolutely. So, extreme martial arts. For those of you who have never seen an XMA before, what is it? Okay. So, XMA is basically like uh, the best way to to describe it is if you can infuse music meaning like pumping heart rhythm you know heart rhythming uh uh pulsing music 
almost like a techno beat in some senses. A lot of people use dance music as well. And what they do is that they – it's like music meant to pump you up, right? Um, and what people do is that they take traditional weapons uh, or katas or forms or whatever you want to call them. And what they do is that they do these extreme – like they add a ton of acrobatics to it. They add a ton of – you know, um, they add a ton of like uh, you know – back flips and front flips and cartwheels and these like jumping like 360 kicks. Now there's 640 kicks. Oh my now God. there's 720 kicks. If you look at it like a lot and they borrow a lot from like Taekwondo uh, because the, the Taekwondo has the best kicks in the world, you know, very flashy. Um, and basically it's the whole for, to me. Okay. As at least that I've seen XMA is that it's meant as much as possible to be as flashy and as pretty and as flowery as possible, and people get rated on this shit. Oh, I oh, mean I this, uh, this stuff, hmm. right? So ultimately, I mean, what what does it do? I mean, is it good for the martial art community? I think that if you talk in terms of giving kids something to strive for and, and you know, Absolutely. I think it's something that I'd rather them do that than to go out and commit crimes or do or cause havoc out in the streets mm-hmm. or, you know, anything like that. But if you talk in terms of how powerful is it and how effective is it to real life martial arts in a real life combative situation, I don't know how to judge that. I mean, some people could probably know how to use it and some people do not, but it's meant purely for performance standard or performance level and that's just what it's about fair enough uh, so okay. fans if you have <clears throat> questions i would be more than glad to we will be more than glad to take anything that you may have which is uh please write to us at yin and yang podcast at gmail.com once again that's yin and yang podcast at gmail.com okay sounds good so, Larry, this is your favorite part of the show where you get to take over uh, and most of the time, it's a hostile takeover where you can oh, actually what? get promote the living daylights out, yeah. uh, and you can get to NWO this uh, this show and promote the daylights out of your favorite shows. I will promote my favorite show. The Retro Gamers Podcast will drop every Tuesday, and this past week, yours truly, Anthony Chu, was the guest host as we talked about the 130th episode, uh, excuse me, 130th anniversary of Nintendo. Uh, the Better Half Podcast drops every other Wednesday, talking more wrestling Saturdays at 6.05 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this week was a special episode, which was recorded live from the Seaford train station on Long Island, New York. And of course... The one you're listening to right now, the Yin and the Yang podcast, every Friday. Uh, check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. Give us those five stars, thumbs ups, likes, whatever it is. Uh, definitely give, a, give us positive reviews. And um, it turns out it looks like um, I will be getting my box seat at MetLife Stadium for the XFL New York Guardians for the uh, f- uh, February, excuse me, through April 2020 season. Uh, so come uh, check me out. Maybe I'll give you an autograph. Uh, $50 for an autograph, $65 for a photo, 80 for a combo. And um, I got to actually coming up, I will be at New York Comic Con this weekend. In fact, when you're listening to this, I will most likely be online to get into New York Comic Con. So I'll check that out. And at the end of October, I will be at Chiller Theater. And myself and Anthony Chu will grace the State, uh, the State Theater of New Jersey for Mystery Science Theater 3000 Live. Will we be signing autographs at that point? Uh, yes. Uh, my autographs will be $60 an autograph. Yours will be $15 an autograph. Um, combo package, uh, both autographs for $115. Um, photo op for myself. Chu will take the photo, uh, photo for you. Um, combo package, uh, $379. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to make money here. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because my 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 anger management counselor basically said that when you're really pissed off at something, you just laugh it off. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> anyway, 
Larry, you know, I don't understand why my autograph is fifteen dollars and yours is sixty five and 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 all this. You know, Larry, I really feel that sometimes you have a superiority complex over me. I mean, I did. I do run a podcast um, network in an empire. Someone's got to so lay you, down the rules. So you feel that you're superior over me, basically. I, I, I am your superior. Well, Larry, that's a very negative way of thinking. And I think that the most appropriate way for me to answer you would be to simply, basically, playing this as a dedication to you to send you a message. A very clear message, in fact. I don't want to wait for, for my, my fries to get colder. <laughs> I don't like when you laugh now. I'm sorry? It's weird now when you laugh. Oh, no, stop. Larry, stop. I don't okay. know if you're mad or happy or what. Larry, come on. Well, let's find out. Kyrie Sane is a bitch. Excuse me. Uh oh, wait. Uh oh. I wanted him to laugh. The motherfucking son of a bitch! The fucking motherfuck! Fuck! Motherfuck! Shit! Motherfuck! What? Um, how's, how's Huang? Well, we don't need him anymore this week, uh, in case you want to know. What happened to Huang? I don't know. Will, will he be back next week? Well, um, the problem with that is, uh... Hmm. What's the best way to explain this to you? Uh, well, I think this will be the best way. It sounded loud. <laughs> Tally ho!